your approach to deer shot placement of spray and prey, this is the video for you. Spray and prey is inhumane, ineffective, and it risks damaging the very meat you're hoping to harvest. I'm going to cover exactly where to aim your rifle on a deer to have the fastest, cleanest, safest, most ethical kill you can make all while limiting damage to the meat. You put a lot of effort into hunting. Getting up at the crack of dawn, putting on your camo underpants, splashing some hot dough urine on, napping in your stand. You don't want to put all that effort in only to blow your shot on a lousy shot. Now, I'm by no means the most accomplished deer hunter to walk the earth, but I've shot enough buck to know a few things about proper shot placement. That last pick was a 200 plus pound monster that got me into the main big buck club. The story about shot placement on that one in a moment. But before we get into where you should aim that boomstick on the deer's body, let's talk about aiming. More specifically, testing your aim. You need to know your abilities and limits and not to exceed them in the field. You owe the deer the respect of a clean kill. Expect the unexpected. Deer don't always present within 50 yards offering you a clean broadside shot from a benched position. Take a few eight inch paper plates with you to the shooting range. That's a rough guide for the vital organ area you will be most likely aiming at. Take a few shots while sitting and standing. Then take a few shots from your offhand. Move the target farther away. Repeat the process. Do it enough and you'll be able to gauge whether your opportunity in the field is within your ability. There's no shame in admitting your limitations. In fact, that's far more admirable than taking a luck shot. Luck shots rarely work. You're better off skipping a risky shot and just waiting to see if the deer comes back to present itself with another, better opportunity. That said, Shooting a stationary target is one thing, hitting a moving target is something else. What are the odds that deer you see is on the move? Can you hit a deer on the move? I'll only fire on a moving deer if it's close and it's moving slowly. Otherwise, I let it go. I'm not interested in a gut shot where there's no blood trail and the deer travels far off to die under some brush never to be recovered. So where are you going to place those crosshairs? Aim behind the shoulders is the general advice most people are given, and for good reason. That's where a deer's vital organs are, the heart, lungs, and liver. That shot isn't always possible, but in most cases that's the advice you want to follow. Let's look at a few pictures, all provided by SHTF blog writer, Prepper Press author, and firearms extraordinaire Steve Markwith. Look at this pic. Here we have a fuzzy little broadside whitetail. The neck is kill shot area. The larger oval is the lungs, and the small circle is the heart. The obvious target here is the lungs. If you're into killing small deer, take the shot. Pick two. Now look at this sexy little buck. You have two options here. The circle on the right represents the long heart area, the ideal spot for your bullet to strike. The wrinkle here is that he's headed into a swamp 50 yards ahead at walking speed. You can instead aim for the shoulder, the circle on the left. Strike him there and he's likely going to drop to the ground and you can avoid trying to retrieve him in the swamp. If your timing is off, aiming for the shoulder gives you a bit of a lead. The deer could essentially walk into proper shot placement in the lungs. Take the shot. Pick three. Look at this big bruiser. Do you wait for him to turn broadside or do you take the shot? If he's already in your sights, fire away. If lifting your rifle risks jumping him, wait for him to turn. Pick four. What about this shot? The buck is on the move, but at close range. Next shots can be risky. If you're successful, you'll pile him up on the ground. If you're not, know your limitations. Pick five. Here we go. This is the exact shot I was presented with when I took that monster main buck. It dressed out at 210.5 pounds. I was deep in the north woods scouting terrain when I was finding good sign. Fresh deer poop, a big buck scrape. I came back the next morning and put some rag strips soaked in dough urine on some trees. I leaned against a tree and I waited. That's when I heard it, crashing through the trees. It was loud. Big mane moose loud. I readied my rifle as the monster emerged through the woods. I took aim. I fired. He bounded off. I'd missed him entirely. I quickly changed my position, hoping to catch him circle around, and I waited 20 minutes. It was about lunchtime then, I was cold and I figured he was gone. I stood up, gathered my hot, erotic dough urine rags, and sure enough, there he was again. This time we were staring at each other right in the eyes. Just like this photo, we weren't more than 30 yards apart. I lifted my rifle, aimed right where this circle is, and put a 180 grain Corlock 308 round into his chest. This bullet creates the deadliest mushroom in the woods. But the buck bounded off again. I hit him that time, I must have. I sat down for about 10 minutes, giving it time to go lie down and die. I went to look for what was sure to be a certain blood trail only to find. Nothing. Nada. Zip. I was sure I'd hit him. I must have. He was so close. Did buck fever set in? Did pulling the trigger move the rifle to the right? I've been guilty of that before. I searched for sign, everywhere. 
And then, I saw him bounding off again through the trees. I went to that spot. Again, no sign. Nothing. Nada. Zip. I waited again. This scenario played out over and over again, over the course of what felt like an hour. I'd look for blood, find nothing, but see him bounding off again. I fired more than one shot during that time, until eventually, he emerged and stood rear end of me about 60 yards away. Conveniently, there was a chest high tree stump next to me. I rested the rifle on that stump, took careful aim, and hit him in the back of the neck. He dropped right there. It was only then, when I was gutting him out, that I found out what happened. That initial shot smashed his shoulder hard, but all the bleeding was internal. I had to pull out his organs out of a big pool of blood. So back to this photo. Take the shot. I did. Pick six. Look at this shot placement. Do you take this shot? The best target here might be the neck, but the dead tree blocks the shot. Do you aim for that shoulder and lungs area? Tough call. If he's close, maybe. Pick seven. This is what's called the Texas heart shot. Shooting the deer in the ass in hopes it gets to the heart. Admittedly, this is what I was looking at in my final shot on the big buck, but he was standing tall and still and I had a chest high rest for accurate shot placement in the back of the neck. Any scenario short of that, you pass on this shot entirely. Sorry, Texas, your heart shot sucks. Let the deer go. I hope that advice is helpful. Once you fired that shot, watch the deer. Odds are high you're excited, heart is racing, and you can't wait to go check. Check gun safety, gain composure, check your rifle, clear your head, give the deer time to go off bed down before beginning your search. What are your thoughts on proper deer shot placement? Disagree with something I said? Let me know in the comments and check out my website for more articles on hunting, pew pew, and prepping. Stay safe out there.